Greetings Metalheads, welcome to another edition of the Friday 13th YouTube channel. Today on the 22nd of January 2022, I had the opportunity to interview Vivian Lalu from the band Lalu, a great progressive metal band, rock band from France, who have just recently released their new album on Frontier Records called Paint the Sky, which is an absolute amazing album. If you haven't heard it, please go and check it out and go and buy it. It only got released a couple of days ago. So we spoke to Vivian and we talked about the first two albums, Organic Metal and also Atomic Arc, which are two fantastic albums. Now the first album, Organic Metal, came out on Line Music. The second album, Atomic Arc, was released on Serenity Laser Records. So you really need to check this out. They're really two good albums. So we spoke about the album, the new album, Paint the Sky, which is a great album, like I said. And we also talked about other things. He's done a lot of projects, so you really need to check out this interview. Um, it's going to be broken up into two parts because it was over an hour long, the interview, in-depth interview, which was fantastic. So have a watch. Let me know what you think. Thumbs up. Please share on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and any other social media sites. Also share on Facebook in groups. So thanks for watching, guys. Be safe. And uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Stay metal. Cheers. Okay, then, so let's talk about the new album, then, Painting the Sky. Yeah. Why the title? It was a great album. I mean, when I first heard the album, I must have played it five times in one day. Ah, really? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was just, like, playing it and playing it and playing it. I'm highly happy to hear that. I've heard it so much. I mean, we worked so much on this record. We heard the song so much. After a while, we cannot imagine how it feels to hear it for the first time. We cannot have uh, the proper distance, you know, uh, and have a purely objective view, you know, of uh, how it sounds. So that's why I love to hear comments uh, of uh, listeners like you and uh, get an idea of how it is, because we we obviously have a different perspective when we make albums. So thank you so much for... Uh, You're welcome. I mean, so uh, far, there's like three albums for 2022 that have really stood out for me. Lalu's one of mm -hmm. them. Um, Star One is another album that I really like. That's, mm -hmm. com that's coming out next month. And also mm -hmm. Tony Martin's solo album. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like the three albums of this year that I really like the most. Okay. So, so you're in there, well, Vivian. You're in uh, there, man. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's January. There is still a lot of time ahead. I think there is uh, a lot of great music that's going to be released uh, uh, this year. Um, I, I don't know, actually. I, ne I never watch the, the news on the. Uh, on the uh, metal and uh, prog websites, they have no clue about what's coming. So what did you call the album Paint the Sky? Um, because it's the name of the song uh, I wrote uh, like 15 years ago. Uh, actually, this uh, track, I, I wrote it a long time ago, and uh, it's actually the favorite song of my father. Uh, my dad always say that uh, Paint the Sky is the best song I've ever written, and my drummer Jelly actually says the same thing to me. And uh, when he heard it, and I was also speaking with my dad, and they told me, yeah, this has to, it's like the album has to be an excuse to release that track. So finally, <laughs> Bend the Sky uh, became uh, the, the album's title as well. And um, for the rest, um, Mr. Wilson made his uh, story out of it, you know, um, because you know, I write the music, but I have no clue uh, about lyrics or concept. I, I, I mean, most of the times, yeah. uh, for example, for Chadren, for Temporal, I had written something myself, but here I let 100% uh, freedom to Damien. And in the end, we went for this concept. Um, it, it's a little difficult to explain. It's like um, I, Damien does it great, but I'm not an Englishman like him, so it's a little difficult. It's like, you know, humanity is uh, searching for a better world, be it in the stars with uh, Earth number two, you know, Elon Musk is bringing us to Mars and then in the hopes of finding an exoplanet and uh, have a new planet to move to, you know, if things get uh, uh, bad here. <laughs> and um, there is also this promise of a metaverse by the company Facebook, as you know, Facebook announced uh, metaverse it's even their new name and they want to create this virtual reality this virtual world in which we'll have uh, a different appearance we'll be able to interact in a virtual environment with your friends from all over the world and all over the world and they um they advertise it like um, a better new way to live life in a fantastic new environment and it's the same principle it means that human beings uh tend to want to live to a new planet or create a, a better uh, alternate or virtual world. 
but actually the same problems that we have today will follow us there. So uh, in this metaverse of Facebook, you will still find uh, the dark web or very creepy things. Uh, in this future planet, we will have probably, we will uh, have wars. And it's really about um, looking at ourselves in the mirror as a species, you know, and making our own introspection and solve the problems for um, which we are responsible for. Because the problem, I, I mean, changing the, the, the backdrop changing the the background the landscape around us will not change things the, these problems will follow us so uh, yeah i hope uh, nobody's sleeping <laughs> <laughs> no so that's, that's that's the only title you had for the album paint the sky was the only title you had yeah and actually uh, i love the cover because it perfectly underlines that feeling like you have this kind of collage uh you have in the background this kind of a cold dark space with stars and on top of it a new reality that this girl is uh, painting like in it would be in virtual reality or I don't know, but she's trying to paint uh, a sky and a, a better world. And uh, that's kind of a illustration of that idea. Right then, so who did the artwork for the album? Who did the painting? Tra Travis Smith. Oh, Travis Smith, the, the yeah. yeah. Yeah, never, Travis, never more uh, in death than all those bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was a massive fan of death. Yeah, me too. Fan. I actually, yeah, got to, and, I actually uh, got to interview Chuck a couple of times. Oh, ah, fantastic! I, I I loved him so much, and also Gin Hogland uh, back in the day. Wow, man, it was uh, yeah, symbolic and uh, all those records, uh, fantastic. And so uh, yeah, I always loved Travis. He was the one who made the artwork of Atomic Arc back in the day. Uh, which was a good choice because Atomic Arc had a heavier side, you know, darker uh, edge. So uh, Travis was the perfect man for that. But I still wanted to work with him, even if I was making this progressive uh, reboot, you know. Yeah, yeah. So how did you get the lineup for this new arm? Because you got Jelly on drums. He used to, is he still with the Adagio? Yeah. Is he still playing drums for Adagio? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, he produced also their last record. That's another and Symphony made... X. That's a, a, the French Symphony yeah, X. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> fantastic. I mean, uh, Stéphane Forte, the, the, the leader, the, the guitar player, and uh, he's fantastic. And uh, I actually met Jelly during the tour we mentioned before, the, the live at uh, P60, uh, this period, just after Atomic Arc, because while we were touring, we were organizing drum clinics for Virgil, because, he, uh, you know, since we were going from one place to another, it was nice if we were somewhere, if uh, Virgil could make some clinics too, you know. And uh, at one of them in Paris, uh, we organized the clinic in Paris and Jelly came here. And uh, that's how we got in touch, actually, because he was um, attending the drum clinic of Virgil. And um, the rest is his story. I mean, uh, even Virgil uh, heard his drumming on the record and told me, oh, man, he, he, uh, he supports uh, Jelly completely. Recently, we were in Paris with, um, you know, Battery Magazine, the, the, the a magazine. Uh, yeah, another one, yeah. Uh, about drums, yeah. And uh, Virgil said to the journalist that they should definitely interview Jelly. And he, I, I mean, uh, Virgil was his hero. And he ended up uh, playing on the next record after Atomic Arc, filling up for him and uh, with his support, you know, which is uh, really great for him. I mean, I, I love Jelly. He is indeed a great drummer, but... He's such a fantastic sound engineer. He has uh, golden ears, really. He's like a samurai of sound. And it was a pleasure working with him on Paint the Sky. I know, because when I first heard the new album, I thought Virgil was playing the drums because his drumming is so good. It sounds just like Yeah, him. yeah. And I was on Facebook when I shared the first uh, preview, audio preview. People were writing that it's Virgil. They, they thought it was Virgil playing. Yeah, I, I mean, how lucky am I? to have a neighbor who lives, uh, I mean, almost neighbor, he lives one hour from me here, but to find this uh, man who can have this uh, power, you know, and uh, metal attitude like Ryan from uh, Oniric Meton, and at the same time, I have the groove and shops, uh, you know, of uh, Virgil. I mean, it's, uh, it's insane. I was really lucky to, to meet him. And at the same time, have a Sunan Jainer to, to mix the album. It was like a three in one, you know. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you hook up with Damien? I mean, obviously, he's Threshold. We all know him from Threshold. And yeah, also yeah. Star One Project. He does the Star One Project as well. So how did, mm -hmm. you, hook up with, how, how did you hook up with Damien? Well, I knew Damien uh, from a long time already. Uh, I knew him from the early 2000s. Um, 
uh, with a friend of mine. We had dinner already at home back in the day, and he heard actually my composition, Paint the Sky, already in the early 2000s, in the mid 2000s. And uh, we always wanted to do something together. We were also speaking a lot in the MySpace times. And then, you know, I was busy with other things and he too, and we kind of uh, lost track of each other. And it just came natural this time around. Um, I, especially if I was going to uh, release that song, to produce that song and uh, build everything around it. I really, and you know, I totally went for this uh, progressive rock uh, vibe. So for me, it was the right choice to have an English singer. It was very important for me that the singer would be English and speak a perfect English and write lyrics uh, like a true Englishman would do and not uh, somebody else, uh, you know, from another part of Europe. I mean, I love so much uh, English progressive rock of the 70s. If you want to go for that, I think that it's important to surround yourself with the, the right uh, English person and The cool thing is that uh, when it comes to the heavier side, Damien already worked with Threshold, you know, with uh, also Headspace sometimes is heavy, even if it's still prog. So um, it was natural for him. I mean, uh, it was not a known territory. Uh, he already works with Hayden Wakeman, you know, so, and uh, I think one time he was on tour with Rick too, uh, but he, he knows already the world and codes of progressive rock as well as progressive metal. So, uh, I mean, It was just a natural choice. You cannot imagine somebody better for that. Did you actually audition anybody else for singers? Uh, no, not really, because uh, I remember that uh, back in the day, I wrote to Damien, and uh, for, for a while, the message was hanging there. You know, I had no reply. And I was talking in the, in the middle, you know, with uh, other vocalists. And... Uh, But uh, those uh, vocalists had already contracts, uh, you know, uh, on another albums. And, you know, um, it's always the same thing. They are not English, so uh, they were not English. And I, I prefer to be patient and it paid off. I mean, uh, I got Damien. The, the only bad thing that happened to us is the, um, is the pandemic. I mean, it was a bad and a good thing at the same time. Bad because Damien had to go to the studio of Jelly. He had to drive there to record the vocals. And because of the lockdown, uh, Damien was stuck in the UK, he couldn't move. So uh, finally, we had to arrange recordings with Hayden Wakeman, with Clive Nolan, uh, you know, those people he collaborated with to be able to help us and make the recordings happen. So yeah, it was a challenge, but in the end, um, I think it's uh, it seems bloody fine. I mean, I'm, I'm, compared to my previous album, I am really in love with uh, Pain the Sky. I'm really in love with the, the result that I'm hearing now. And as, as you heard before, it wasn't the case with uh, Chadrain or my previous albums. And I'm really happy this time around. So maybe we've done something good along the way. You know? Obviously, the album was recorded through a lockdown. Did, Carl, did, did um, Damien mm. do the album with Carl Groom? Did you ever consider using Carl Groom at Ice House Studios? Uh, I don't know. This one was up to Damien. I think he was trying to to find a way to record the whole album. And what happened is that uh, Hayden was available until a certain time, so he could make as much as he could with him. And then he had to do the rest with Clive. So um, we juggled uh, between uh, between them. Right then, so, so you got. Honest, uh, I mean, you've got some brilliant musicians, guest musicians on this album, haven't you? You've got like Tony Franklin, you've got you've got Alexandria, who's been in White, uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heartland, and you've got like other people like Sam and Phillips. I mean, how did yeah, you, yeah. Jordan Bordensen? How did you come up with these people? How did you hook up with them all? Um, Jordan, I knew him uh, for years already. Uh, I got in touch with him uh, when uh, Temporal, when the Shadran album was released. I remember that I sent over the the title track to him. And he liked it a lot. And um, he uh, he added it back in the day. It was the beginning of Spotify. And he favorited it on his uh, Spotify profile. And then we spoke together. And he called me uh, while on tour with Dream Theater. I think he was in the hotel room in Jakarta. And we were speaking together. And I asked uh, Jordan, listen, I'm, I'm making a new album. So that was the beginning of Atomic Arc. And uh, I asked him, would you like to play on that? And uh, obviously, he, he liked the idea. And... Uh, We are still friends to this day, and uh, it was natural to ask him again to come back uh, 
on uh, Paint the Sky, especially since I had this part that sounded a little like Dream Theater and I was totally hearing uh, a Jordan Rudess type of solo. So I sent the part to him. And I mean, he, it's the same. He's on the move all the time. So he was on tour with Dream Theater at the time, but he still found a way to record it. Uh, that's why I think on the music video, he's actually live uh, with Dream Theater. He's playing his solo. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's the venue where they were playing with Dream Theater. And you've got Tony Franklin, um, oh, he was in Blue Murder and the firm mm -hmm. on bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fantastic player. I, uh, I got him through uh, my manager at the time. Um, who was in contact with him. And uh, I always, you mentioned before, Planetix. Um, that album with Tony Franklin uh, blows my mind. I love his work with the Action Alien. Right. I'm a big fan of Tony. And of course, the Bl Blue Murder album, uh, which is also a big influence from Dupe. Oh, yeah. Great album. So, mm. I mean, you've got like, so those, you had Simon Phillips, obviously, he's worked with Judas Priest. Mm. And he's done, it's a session drum. How do you hook up with this guy? With? With Simon F Phillips. Ah, yeah. Simon. Uh, actually, this one uh, dates back to the mid 2002. I think it was in 2004. Um, we, I was speaking a lot back in the day with Simon. We were chatting a lot also with uh, Messenger, you know, Microsoft Messenger. And I was exchanging music with him and he invited me to a Toto concert in Paris. And of course, because it was a plus one ticket, I say to, to Jupe, you know, come over. So Jupe took the train. He went from the Netherlands uh, to join me. And we went to see uh, Toto, you know, and we were sitting um, on a very nice side of the stage. Simon uh, got us some nice seats. Then we drink with him afterwards, you know, after the show. And uh, I, uh, I gave him the, the CD, you know, and uh, I think uh, after the tour, it stayed for a while at his desk, at his studio, and he ended up uh, recording parts for it. It was actually the first draft, the first version we made. And so when we made Paint the Sky with Jelly, when we decided to make this album called Paint the Sky with that song being the central piece, obviously Jelly had to play it, you know, because I, I made a, a band with Jelly, Jupe and Damien. So we had to play it together to remake everything. But I really wanted to, to keep this original jam with uh, Simon uh, as a bonus track so we can hear the, this first version that we, we made uh, together. And I think it sounds really cool to have these versions, which, by the way, are the exact same song with the same structure, but sounds completely different. I mean, if you listen, the Simon Phillips version and the instrumental version is totally different. It's like a completely different song from the... From the other one. Yeah, I mean, you got Steve Walsh from X Kansas on vocals. As yeah, well. yeah. That, that must have been awesome getting him on vocals. Yeah, yeah, of course. And this one also happened through my manager. I never spoke with uh, Steve personally, but uh, he was really cool. He, I know that he he corrected some of the mistakes because his, his parts, I wrote the lyric myself and he corrected a few uh, spelling mistakes. And I think at the time he had to undergo surgery and he recorded again a second take after. Um, after uh, recording the song. So what we are on the album is actually his uh, last uh, take. Yeah, right, that's really great. I, 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 I mean, uh, I told you my parents were playing uh, Kansas covers in the 70s, you know, when I was in the belly of my mother. So you can imagine <laughs> to have Steve Walsh on the album is, uh, is crazy. <laughs> well, so how long did it take to record this album? Obviously, it was done in separate studios because of lockdown. Yeah, everything uh, at Jelly Studios. Jelly did uh, everything, and because of lockdown, that's the funny thing. He lives one hour from here. We were supposed to sit together to do it, and we ended up to have to use uh, a third-party software to connect our studios together and stream the audio in real time and make the mix as if we sit next to each other. We would hear in the headphones the, the same mix uh, instantly from internet. Um, it's really saved us because uh, it would have been impossible otherwise. So how, how long did, how, did Damien write all the lyrics for you? Or did you write oh, the lyrics? Oh, yeah, everything. No, no, he, he wrote everything. Only the, the part of uh, Steve Walsh I had written because obviously before approaching Damien, I already wrote the song. I was missing the, the lead vocals. So he wrote uh, this part. But um, yeah, he took care of everything, you know. When I compose music, I care only about the music mostly. And it's like uh, when you have an earthquake, you know, the, the machine which records the earth shaking the seismograph um i write music and it's it's 
it's kilometers and kilometers of music. And then I send it over, like I used to do with Martin back in the day. I send this over to Damien. And Damien, uh, I'm very lucky because he loves to, he's creative, right? So he loves to just find vocal lines and uh, some really cool arrangements. And by the way, the song titled Standing at the Gates of Hell was an instrumental in the beginning. It was a jam. It was, a, it was actually a jam and recorded like a jam. And Damien heard it and he had instantly ideas uh, for extra lines and stuff. That's why there is vocals on that song. Right, okay then. So what songs from the new album stand out to you and why? Well, this particular track, I love Standing at the Gates of Hell and um, I love... Um, hmm. uh, I love We Are Strong. Very positive and powerful ending. I like it because... Uh, I mean that's the that's the thing is that this album has to be uh, positive, especially in the times we are in. So it has a lot of positive messages, like the chosen ones. We will find a new planet one day, and uh, we will fix all of our problems, and everything will be fine. And it has this uh, positive vibe overall. And uh, yeah, we, I love we are strong. I also like a lot. Uh, yeah, the chosen ones. I like it a lot. Uh, I love uh, Emotionalized because it's completely different from uh, anything I've done. Um, I mean, uh, even the vocals, you don't expect to hear such vocals uh, on uh, on what's happening in the background and it's uh, fairly progressive. Yeah. I, I I like the, the whole album as a whole this time. Right then, so why, think, did, uh, so why did Martin leave the band? What was the reason for Martin? Uh, oh, he, he didn't leave the band. Just We were speaking and... Uh, I, he knew that uh, for a lot of years I wanted to record with Damien and uh, Damien was available and I wanted to make an um, old school under markets progressive rock album and uh, Martin and me we are still friends you know we speak all the time we play games together we are uh, still uh, best buddies you know and uh, I actually uh, wrote some songs with him that I want to pitch to Frontiers I am helping him to make a uh, I don't know if I'm revealing something I shouldn't, but uh, he wants to make a solo record and uh, he asked me after he penned the sky to to make something like that for him. So, uh, yeah, oh, excellent. I'm going to work on that. Uh, yeah, we are still very close friends and he's uh, very understanding. You know, it's like when it's your best friend, you know, like a brother, they understand these things. Uh, there's no problem between us. And um, yeah. So how long did it take to record this album? Obviously, it was done with um, Jelly. There it was the writing part, which took uh, some time um, between the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020. And then it took basically uh, two, three months to, to finish off completely. Um, yeah. And it will be even faster next time because obviously uh, we learned now how to work together and uh, it will help a lot for what's to come. If we don't have again a challenge as we had with the lockdown, it will be even easier, you know. So how did the record deal with Frontiers come about and who else did you approach before Frontiers? Well, I was, um, <coughs> I, I don't think I can say this, but uh, f uh, first of all, I was contacted by Alessandro Del Vecchio from Frontiers, uh, who heard about me from Simone, uh, because Simone and him uh, wrote on the John Land album and other things at uh, Frontiers and... Uh, he was surprised that we never connected before and we connected. And back in the day with Jupe and Jilly, we made a UK cover, um, a cover from uh, UK. And uh, Alessandro heard that and uh, he loved it. And then we got in touch. We showed him what we were working on with the Lalu record and he immediately wanted to, to participate and master it and pitch it to Frontiers. And at the time I was also speaking with uh, another label and uh, the difference of dynamic we had is that the other label, I approached them myself in the beginning and Frontiers came to me. So, uh, you know, it creates a different dynamic, of course. Uh, yeah. The, the Frontiers really wanted the album and uh, yeah, it's, it's doing great so far. I'm actually happy working on the new one and I cannot wait. Uh, I'm so excited actually uh, about the next one. So, so how, what sort of reviews have you been getting so far? Obviously, I give it five uh, out of five. I, I am uh, mind blown. I cannot believe it. The, there is not uh, one. It, it's crazy because I, I, I sometimes read the, the comments on YouTube and their videos of Dream Theater or any band. And a lot of times they get wrecked people. They have angry fans. And, 
And the crazy thing is that until now, we have released uh, two music videos uh, for Paint the Sky and also on the various posts, you know, uh, on all the social media websites, not one single bad comment, which is crazy. Uh, I mean, the, the video of the chosen ones uh, has like uh, 70k views and I cannot explain it. It's weird uh, because I used, for example, for Oniric Metal and even Atomic Arc, uh, I had people uh, who vote, uh, ah, it seems gay, like the previous album, you know, some very harsh comments. And I was expecting some harsh comments because it's prog, you know, it's less heavy. And I just cannot uh, explain it. I, but it's a good thing. I'm happy that... Uh, you know, um, ultimately, every, there is a consensus and uh, everybody seems to love it. I mean, for us, um, it feels amazing because we work so hard on this album. Huh? Uh, at the end, uh, Jelly uh, had to visit the hospital because he had uh, some tachycardia and we, we were not sleeping a lot. And we really hurt our health making Pain the Sky at the end. It was, um, we, we almost uh, ruined our health. So um, at least it's been done for a good reason. Uh, if, uh, if, if people receive it that well, it's, uh, it feels really great. So how do you see well, this yeah. album as a progression from the previous two albums? Uh, just going back to my roots, uh, me going older and dropping all the heaviness that you had on uh, Atomic Arc, for example, and uh, keeping the, the progressive side while, while still maintaining a modern edge. Like I said, I, I don't want to to do some kind of a uh, retro or neo prog, you know, or use the same amplifiers from back in the day. I know that there are a lot of bands uh, who do this and I'm actually a fan. For example, I love Wobbler. I, uh, I love what they are doing when they try to emulate the sound of uh, the seventies and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I would say that I want to come back to um, a purer type of progressive metal where um, the progressive world is more like a, uh, 70s than Gent, for example, because the, this scene took a big turn uh, the last years with Gent music and uh, a lot of uh, Gent flavored progressive metal now. And I wanted to make a complete turn back <laughs> and uh, make something which is prog, which could be almost feel, I, I mean, you feel the spirit of the 70s, but at the same time, you have this heavier edge. And there comes the metal part, this more modern, heavier edge. And so it's kind of a pure uh, progressive metal, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that, so, that's, that's what I could say. So are you going to be touring this year, do you think, with COVID? No, 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 no. Impossible. I think that we have a chance to tour after the next one. I don't see ourselves uh, touring before 2023 or something. So I think until then, maybe some festivals uh, will have a chance to happen again. But right now, zero chances. Do you think you'll ever play the Prog Power Festival in America? Because that'd be a good op opportunity for you. Yeah, I never uh, traveled to the USA before. It's one of my dreams. Uh, if it should happen, that would be great. Uh, but I guess that to play uh, Prog Power, you need uh, to have a lot of fans and already a, a big reputation, you know. And um, with Frontiers, especially right now, Lalu stops to be uh, too underground. You know, it's starting to, I mean, every day, it's crazy. My social media is exploding since the release. I get new flow followers all the time, be it on my page, you know, or the, the page of the band project. So I guess that this will help, the, this deal with Frontiers will help to bring uh, the project to a wider audience. And maybe then we, um, we could guarantee that by uh, booking us, they would have... Uh, you know, fans who come to see us or I don't know. I don't see myself as a big name, you know, yet at least. So, do you, so what band, what bands would you like to tour with that are on Frontier Records? Uh, DGM, Simone, for example, uh, would love that. And uh, I love all their uh, 80s uh, type of bands like Crazy Leaks and stuff. It's really uh, fun stuff. I, I, I mean, uh, you know, I, I lived the 80s all the way from the age of two years old until 12. So uh, I love music of the 80s. So any kind of revival 80s type that Frontiers is doing would be really fun to play with. And uh, But my dream, honestly, it would be to do something with Alan Parsons. I'm a massive fan of Alan Parsons and he's working with Frontiers. Frontiers are releasing, you know, his uh, live albums and... Uh, that one would be cool, for example, to to open for Mr. Parsons would be great. Wow, there's a, there's a band on uh, Frontier Records that you may know called Terra Odin. Hmm. 
they're a band from nowhere, X Barrel Architect. Oh, okay. and, it, and it's Steve. Yeah, and it's, it. yeah, it's Steve from Testament who used to be in Death on Bass Guitar. Mm, that'd be, that'd yeah, be a good. Yeah. That'd be a good tour for you guys. Yeah, yeah, but uh, if we because now we took a turn, huh? we made this reboot of the project, which is progressive, you know. So uh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> right. I think uh, we will really, uh, and especially with the next album, I think we continue on the on this progressive path. Uh, even more than the rabbit hole, as I say. So, uh... <laughs> so, so how long's the deal with Frontier Records? Are you happy? You happy with the way things are turning out so far? Yeah, I'm happy. I have multiple albums to make. Again, I, I I'm not authorized to. Unfortunately, you know, it's contractually. I'm not authorized to say the specifics. But yeah, we have uh, quite some albums to make together, and that's great because when we were talking with them initially, I said that uh, you know I really want to develop this idea of. Uh, yes kind of music but with a modern uh, production kind of a new generation yes and genesis and and of course i absolutely don't compare myself to yes like i said yes is a religion for me you i mean it's uh i am like a dumbed down version of yes uh let's be honest but um uh, yeah i have this id and i i love what i'm doing right now and it's uh nice to be able to develop you know the um, the, the project now uh, in, th in this direction and uh, I mean it's great I love prog music I was born into it and uh, the prospect of doing uh, prog you know every year what's best you know I, yeah yeah well I love it. I'd like to thank you for doing this interview Vivian so do you have anything welcome, to say to the people that are watching this on YouTube um yeah just um like the song of the record I mentioned the song titled we are strong we are indeed strong and just I invite everybody to stay positive I myself, uh, I am suffering of uh, COVID-19 right now, but it's a lighter form of COVID and I'm, I'm, I am positive in both ways, you know, <laughs> positive to COVID and uh, uh, in my mind. And I think that's the key. We, we need to believe that uh, this will be over at some point and uh, continue to fight, to release this type of music, to advance, to continue our lives and uh, everything will be fine in the end. We are strong and we are together too. We are Definitely. supposed to be able to help each other. We are the era of social media, so yeah. Oh well, I hope you have a nice day. Get well soon. You too, Jason. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. doing the interview, and I say uh, the album is fucking awesome. <laughs> I love You're it. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> Take care, man. You. Keep keep in touch. Cheers, Thank man. You, Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Cheers.